Apple's Pro Raw has finally arrived. Here's how we used Apple's new iPhone 12 Pro Max to go from this shot to this using Apple's new Pro Raw format. Now, this isn't the first smartphone to shoot RAW. It's not even the first time you can shoot RAW on an iPhone, but it's the first time Apple has designed and released a phone to support a RAW format natively in its camera app. Now, last week I did a quick review of the new iPhone 12 Pro Max, the current flagship camera from Apple. Josh has been kind enough to update it to iOS 14.3 beta and has let me test it out again. Josh does home automation videos, so if you're interested in that topic, be sure to check out his new channel in the description below. To use Pro Raw first, you need to be running iOS 14.3 beta, but this will be supported natively soon in the next official update. Then you go into your settings, followed by camera, then formats, then simply toggle Raw on. Then in your camera app, you simply toggle Raw on in the top right hand corner. Like my mini tripod for the iPhone. So we're doing a multiple exposure technique, which car photographers have been doing for years with their digital SLRs, but I don't think this is something you see them do too often with their smartphones. But it's going to be a rough as guts attempt. It's not going to be the best shot I've done to put in my portfolio, but it's just about showing the technique and testing in principle if it works with this Apple Pro Raw feature. And now, but it's going to blow out, I think, on the front panel there because it's a fair bit. So let's expose from first. That's giving me four seconds at that. So, okay. give me, so I'll expose for the front, which is really bright at the moment. Yeah, and then that'll give us a good headlight for you to blend in. So let's get back into Photoshop and open these up. This is Adobe Camera Raw. This is the exact same process I use to import my raw files for my work. The only difference being is these files are off a smartphone. Now the automated settings with the automated white balance and this extra vibrancy and I'm sure there's some sharpening here as well. There it is, there's the extra sharpening that we see. That's evidence of what the smartphone does in camera processing but having access to Pro Raw we can now override this and turn the sharpening further up or turn the sharpening further down. We can turn these down as I would prefer. Now this is just personal preference but I'm going to go through and select my exposures for blending into my final exposure. How cool is that? Apple Pro Raw. Now we have our creative control. Now I'm going to play around with this for a while and combine these exposures together in Photoshop. I'm not going to retouch any dots or anything like that, but I will blend the exposures and mask accordingly, as you can see with our light painter out here in the background. Now this is a bit beyond the scope of the video, but if you're interested in my car photography and retouching stuff in more detail, you can watch the other videos on my channel. And here I finally add the three exposures that I've used to complete my final layout. Now I haven't retouched out number plates, all the dirt and dust and little signs in the background. That's kind of beyond the scope of this tutorial. I wanted to show that the power of Pro Raw and raw photography knowledge and lighting and retouching skills can now allow you to use smartphones to create creative imagery that you wouldn't have otherwise been able to do in early generations. But to summarize, I would suggest reducing some of the normal iPhone camera processing, such as sharpening. So I would reduce sharpening to start with, maybe some of the color noise reduction as well. I would focus on perfecting your white balance to exactly what you want it to be, something that's more aesthetically to your tastes. Uh, I would also soften the highlights and shadows accordingly to your tastes as well. And I would finally then open it up in Photoshop and do your general cleaning. And etc, etc. So in conclusion, as long as you can work with that 12 megapixel resolution, then you really can do just about anything with the iPhone as you would with any other RAW file. And let's be honest, the vast majority of photography done at the moment is only ever going to be published on social media. 
The biggest challenge was keeping the phone stable on our inadequate baby stand and controlling our exposure. Nothing stopping us from using third-party software, but if you're shooting natively with Apple's camera application, it's just a bit too automated for creative overrides. I would have had more control and therefore had gotten this done quicker if I used my Sony a7R Mark IV. Gear-wise, we used this swivel phone mount that fits the iPhone Max's size without any drama. And instead of a baby light stand, I would probably recommend a Joby GorillaPod instead. But if you really want to be serious with your stills and video shooting, I would suggest using something like a small rig cage, then mounting it on the tripod. I'll put a link in the description for all of these below. And so, whilst there's still a big difference between smartphone photography and real cameras, Apple's Pro Raw is a monumental step towards closing that gap. It means you no longer use your smartphone just for capturing moments if you don't want to, but you can now use it for crafting creative imagery as well.